Most NFL fans are likely familiar with the name Vic Beasley, the NFL sack leader just five years ago, powering the Falcons' defense to a Super Bowl appearance. But some people may not know that that same player is now out of the league. It's a bizarre story on what has happened to Vic Beasley. After leaving Atlanta, his career got substantially worse. His situation in Tennessee was just really bad for him and the team, and he had a short stint in Vegas that didn't work out for either side as well. He now finds himself on the free agent market, and nobody really has the explanation as to why. Today, I'm going to dive into where Vic Beasley went to. Back just in 2015, Vic was selected 8th overall by the Falcons, and compared to DeMarcus Ware out of the draft. He had an outstanding combine and had a lot of people looking forward to what would happen in the draft. He ended up being selected 8th overall behind one defensive player. But just one player from that top 10 is still on their original team. So it was no surprise that Vic ended up leaving the situation in Atlanta, but he had it better off than a lot of other guys that were selected in that top 10. Specifically, the number one pick. Jameis Winston ended up throwing 30 interceptions and then being replaced by Tom Brady. So Vic Beasley really had the best situation out of any of those picks. Beasley signed his rookie deal just after the draft, and the expectations were extremely high for him. Coming out of Clemson and being the highest selected defensive player from Clemson since 2007, there was a lot of hype revolving around him. And the Falcons needed a spark plug on defense, and he was ready to provide that. Just in his first season, he did that. A full 16 games as a starter, he recorded four sacks, one interception, and two forced fumbles. A dominant rookie season for Beasley, and had a lot of Falcons fans hopeful for the future. How he turned around the defensive edge so quickly, but there was still some concerns about him. Only having four sacks in that many games is good for a rookie, but also really bad for a guy getting that much playing time and that many snaps. So he was suggested a position change. He changed from defensive end to a strong side linebacker before the season started. And well, a Pro Bowl, a first team all pro, as well as an appearance on the top 100 list awaited. Year two, Beasley was a beast. 15 and a half sacks to lead the entire NFL, and six forced fumbles, which was tied for the league lead. After making the position change at the start of the season, it definitely benefited Beasley for the better throughout the year, and had Atlanta fans super hopeful as he helped lead that defense to a magical playoff run, and a magical run throughout the season that sadly fell short to the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 51. He was just after that year compared to Vaughn Miller, who you have to remember, at that time, Vaughn Miller was considered one of, if not the best player in the NFL. Coming off the Super Bowl 50 run, where he was dominant for the Denver Broncos, the leader in everything and torturing any quarterback that ever played in mile high. And well, Beasley got a chance to play in mile high and had a monster game, two forced fumbles and three sacks, which was crazy, crazy stats in 2016 in one game for a second year player. And that was hopefully just the beginning for Vic Beasley. But sadly, he did fall off, but he managed to at least stay somewhat consistent throughout 2017 to 2019 with 2019 being a bounce back year, recording eight sacks that year, which still was nowhere near the league high, but it was good to see Beasley hopefully gaining back his momentum and his confidence 
after having five sacks in the two seasons prior. He signed with Tennessee in free agency, and well, that was a train wreck. He played just seven games with the Titans, three tackles, and one sack. And honestly, he was quite blunt saying that he made the wrong decision and that it wouldn't have worked out anyway. And I respect that from Vic Beasley, but at the same time, the Titans took a big gamble on him, hoping to get a glimpse of what happened in 2016 with Beasley, but sadly, that was just not the case. He ended up being cut mid-season and played five games with the Vegas Raiders. A short stint there ended up leading to decent numbers, but he never really did anything there and wasn't even a starter in the games. And now he's a 29-year-old free agent, and it's just so sad to see how a player can go from top of the league in all those stats to out of the league in just a matter of five years. We've seen this before with players, most recently Des Bryant, who was one of the best receivers of the era, and he's unemployed right now. Richard Sherman was one of the best cornerbacks of this era, and he just got picked up by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but there was a lot of people who thought he would never see an NFL field again. I hope that Vic Beasley does end up coming back and does play in the NFL again, and here's three teams that could really use him right now. The Seattle Seahawks are one of them, and well... There is not many good things I can say about Seattle's defense. It has been atrocious this year, and that's why they're bottom of the NFC West. Russell Wilson is playing at a very high level once again, but he can't play defense and throw the ball. The Cincinnati Bengals could use him to go with Hendrickson, who they picked up in free agency this year. I think it would be a solid fit, but still would be a really big risk considering the situation of Beasley and we don't really know what the Bengals are planning to do they're sitting at two and one at the moment and they could really do anything from this point on in the season I wouldn't write them off yet I still think they're a contender for their division or at least a wild card spot if Burrow can stay healthy but I think they have to prioritize the offensive line over the defensive line and finally, the Carolina Panthers. It would just be letting the rich get richer. It has been the best defense in the entire league this year so far, and it just seems like it's getting better. They traded for a cornerback from Jacksonville recently, and they are filling the gaps so well. JC Horn goes out, and they go pick up a replacement for him just a few days later. It's going to be a really interesting situation to see what happens for Vic Beasley, and I think Carolina would be a solid fit for him. He would be able to be eased in as they don't really need to use him right now, but either way, I think Beasley will get a job, if not this year, hopefully in the offseason. At this time, it's unclear whether Vic Beasley ever wants to play football again. The only thing that I was able to find on what he's doing post-NFL career is he is working on building a sports facility and complex for the community that he grew up in, in Georgia. But besides that, there's really no details on Vic Beasley's whereabouts right now. It's still unsure whether he wants to come back to the NFL or just call it a career. It's obviously such a huge time investment this game is, but also it's such a hard thing on your body and your mental well-being. And whether Vic Beasley comes back to the NFL or not, fans are going to have to respect his decision. I hope he comes back, but at the same time, he's done a lot already. And at just 29 years old, he can say that he led the NFL in sacks back in 2016, but he was the runner-up for the Super Bowl, the only thing that mattered that season. He's still pretty young for a defensive player, and it's just really sad to see how fast he fell off. 
As for why Vic Beasley is not playing football right now, that is completely unknown. I did as much research for this as I could, but I couldn't find why he hasn't been signed by a team yet. If it's a personal choice or if it's the team's decision. Is he wanted on the open market? I don't see why he wouldn't be. He is just a few years removed from that season, but he'll never get back up to that peak. But he still has a chance to be a very solid NFL player and maybe not a starter, but still depth in this league is so hard to find. I don't understand why a team hasn't taken a gamble on Vic Beasley yet. He's the best defensive player on the open market after Sherman got picked up. So let's hope that someone takes the risk on Beasley. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe. Um, I really enjoyed making this video. Um, all I ask is for a like to help the algorithm out. And I'll see you guys all next time. Goodbye.